Welcome, everybody. This is Debbie Mayberry with National Kitchen and Bath Association. You're here for our final webinar of the month on color and style trends. And today's session is called Decorative Hardware, How It's Been Influenced by Architectural Errors and Styles. And Peter Wells is with us. Um, he's from Amarok, and he's a senior or principal designer with Amarok. We want to thank Amarok for their generous sponsorship for the month of June for all of our webinars. And Peter, let me just unmute your line here if you're, we're ready to get you started. And I think we just need to make sure that your line is unmuted. Uh, can you hear me okay? I can. All right, great. Awesome. Oh, thank you, Debbie. And hello, everyone. Thank you for uh, participating in this last month, uh, last week of uh, June uh, webinar series. Um, uh, just happy to be here. Um, and if you don't know too much about MROC, uh, it's a good time to check us out. Um, we're about a 90-year-old company. For over 90 years, we've been um, providing decorative hardware uh, to you uh, and really cool designs, styles, finishes, trends uh, for your kitchen and bath. Um, and we've also been developing really nice merchandising tools for your design selection needs. Um, and we're very much involved in the kitchen and bath industry. Um, we're very... Um, Pleased to be a participant in this sponsorship for the month of June. Can't believe it's already gone. Um, <laughs> we've sponsored, I think, four uh, each week of the month. We've sponsored a, a webinar. So that's been awesome. Uh, we believe education is important. And uh, it's not about just getting educated, but about getting energized about what you love and do. Um, so after the CEU webinar, um, you can check out amrock.com. Uh, amrock and we're also um, obviously on um, uh, Instagram, or, or on Facebook, Pinterest, House, and we're also in 2020 software design um, for designers and builders, where you can actually download um, Amrock 3D CAD profiles into your virtual space for inspiration design for your clients. So I hope you enjoy this uh, CEU I'm about to present, Decorative Hardware, how it's been influenced by architectural eras and styles. It's a bit of a history lesson as well. So sit back and relax and hope you enjoy. I'm going to go ahead and turn off my video so um, we can get going here. Okay. So learning objectives. Um, choosing decorative hardware, cabinet hardware uh, for a kitchen or bath is important and should be a fun and exciting occasion. Though this selection process usually takes place towards the end of a project, it remains an essential element to the finished space. Uh, this presentation will help provide insights behind the styles and design of cabinet hardware to help best match, pair, or coordinate to your inspir inspirational kitchen or bath theme. Understanding the history and meaning behind decorative hardware styles will allow you to more quickly identify the architecture styles and historical eras that helped influence and shape the designs, which can help you lead the selection process for your choosing uh, the perfect hardware to complete your own kitchen or bath design. So you and your customers will feel more confident when choosing a particular design rather than it simply looks beautiful or cool or stylish. Uh, there will be real context and meaning behind the designs, true inspiration of its existence. So did you realize the decorative hardware you choose is as important as your cabinet selection you place in your kitchen or bathroom. The decorative hardware styles, finishes, and sizes you select will truly accentuate the cabinetry in your creative space. So where are we today with all these styles being offered? When designing your kitchen and or bathroom, you've most likely already decided what theme you may want to showcase, whether traditional, transitional, Contemporary, mid-century modern, or maybe a mix of things like eclectic or something more specific to your style, perhaps coastal, or a popular trending theme like farmhouse. As you begin to research which decorative hardware best fits your vision and pairs perfectly with your cabinetry, you'll soon realize you may want to tie the finish of the hardware to other items in your space besides being solely concerned with just the color and style of your cabinets. 
uh, there may be a particular color tone in the pendant lighting hanging above your beautiful countertop uh, you may want to pair with, or you may want to match your appliances like your refrigerator or stove or other accent pieces that catch your eye. Also, what about the finish of the faucets or plumbing you have in the kitchen and bathroom space? Should you pair to those finished colors and styles too? You'll soon realize you can be easily overwhelmed with so many decorative hardware decisions depending on what theme style you want in your home. Especially if you're now hearing that it's popular to have two-tone cabinets in your kitchen, which means you could have two different finishes or, of hardware placed on your island versus wall cabinets, or two different hardware collection designs to support the transitional or eclectic styles happening in your space. Having a creative designer can help you decide how to keep your space interesting, trendy, and personal without the worry if something is not pairing well or if you're using too much of something or too little. Knowing about how we got here with so many design styles can help you sort through the best style and design you need. So would you believe that the grouping of knobs shown are from the early 1800s on the left? And the group to the right are from the current hardware manufacturers and designers of today. On the left, I'm showing Victorian era brass doorknobs, French lever handles, mission and craftsman copper knobs, and art deco design knobs. On the right, you still get the same feel, and it may be hard to tell if these are new or reproductions of something new or of something vintage. What is exciting about these vintage looking hardware is people still want the style of those times or era in their homes because just as it brought a level of sophistication then, it can still do the same today. So to understand how to get how we got to where we are today with so many designs, we have to take a look back to understand and appreciate our history. After all, you may want to talk about what inspires you to choose a cabinet hardware style or design that best fits your home theme. Example, um, in Chicago, there is the Henry B. Clark House built in 1836. It is Chicago's oldest house and it's of Greek revival style. Understanding what makes this a Greek revival style home could help you select the right accent pieces and hardware if you wanna stay close to the theme of Greek revival, of course. Um, understanding the home also requires understanding the architectural style and understanding a bit about the era it was built in and importantly about the architects themselves who created these structures. So let's begin with looking at some architects and their contribution to not only the structures they built but their influence on decorative hardware. You may be surprised what you learn about the architects. Earlier years, you may not have known, but in many cases, architectural hardware and decorative hardware was also designed, styled, and created by actual architects. It was as a way to furnish the specific buildings they designed. And these original furniture and hardware pieces designed by architects were not initially available to open market. Uh, rather, it could only be found within the buildings they actually built. A good example is Charles René McIntosh, a designer, watercolorist, artist, and famous architect of our time, designed a washstand as part of the furnishings for a room called the Blue Bedroom in an 18th century home in Helmsburg, Scotland. You can see the washstand in the corner picture of the room where large bowls would be placed so you could wash your hands and face in your bedroom. Also, you can see how the room was specifically laid out by Macintosh himself. You may have seen his popular Macintosh uh, chairs before. The Argyle chair, the Ingram chair, the high back chair, and the Hill House chair. How special would that be to have custom hardware or furniture in your home designed by your hired architect? This home, designed by Charles Rene Macintosh, may look like a castle on a hill, right? And it's actually called the Hill House, located in Helmsburg, Scotland. It's the home that the Macintosh washstand and the Hill House chair was actually designed for. It was understood that 
Macintosh's attention to detail surpassed the exterior. He even suggested what color of flowers the homeowners should place on a table in the living room. Uh, this home was described to have oriental interior themes alongside Art Nouveau and Art Deco details. In contrast with the dark masculine hallway and library, the bedroom drawing room to the right is an example of the many white rooms painted in ivory white that Macintosh became renowned for. Macintosh believed that to design a home properly, he had to understand the needs of its occupants. So he spent a great deal of time with the Blackie family during this project's initial stage to ensure his proposal suited their lifestyle. This was often the course of architects of this time and probably done today uh, with many designers. The homes had to be functional in a custom manner for the family living in it. So this included custom architectural hardware or even furniture. Walter Blackie, the owner of the home said, not until we had decided on these inside arrangements did Macintosh submit drawings of the elevations. So in 1982, the house was donated to the National Trust for Scotland and it's open to visitors today. Another architect, uh, Frank Lloyd Wright, was another famous architect, obviously, born in Richland uh, Center, Wisconsin, and resided in Phoenix, Arizona. Many viewed Wright as a pioneering American architect, best known for his Prairie School architectural style movement, also known as Usonian design. Usonian, spelled U S. O-N-I-A-N, was his United States home concept, a way of affordable housing and living that he started crafting in the 1930s. Motivated by his lifelong interest in affordable housing, he built these American system type homes, which were part of the economic plan that played a prominent role in American policy during the first half of the 19th century. These homes were called prairie style homes. The Hurtley House, pictured below left, is considered one of the earliest famous examples of the prairie style homes. Also to the right, the Frederick C. Robbie House was also famously known as another example of prairie style design and was made as a U.S. National Historic Landmark in 1963. But outside of creating American homes, Frank Lloyd Wright also enjoyed architectural hardware too and stained glass windows for the buildings and homes he designed. In this stained glass design called the Tree of Life, Frank Lloyd Wright has reduced the tree to its most elemental geometric form with a square for the roots, simple straight lines for the trunk, and chevrons for the branches. This has inspired decorative hardware designers of our time to create a Frank Lloyd Wright collection, Tree of Life door knocker as seen on the right. You can actually purchase today, I believe at Wayfair or Amazon. Wright is also known for the Robbie windows, uh, stained glass pieces pictured to the far left, uh, which abstractly envisions his surroundings. In the middle is his popular green fan shaped ginkgo leaf stained glass piece. And to the right, you have water lilies with soft blue glass accents. Some furniture he designed, an office chair designed in 1904 and to the far right, a chair from the Isabel Roberts House, designed by Frank Lloyd Wright himself in 1908. He specifically designed this for his office manager and homeowner, Isabel. Like Macintosh, these architectural hardware pieces would be placed in the homes or structures he built, providing custom style that paired along with the styling and theme of the home. In the 1950s, Frank Lloyd Wright also designed the Lewis B. Frederick House in Barrington Hills, Illinois, that sits on 10 acres. This is one of his last built earthy Houstonian homes, built with Philippine mahogany wood. This Lewis B. Frederick House was, has many straight lines that keeps your eyes traveling along the exterior and interior, presenting itself as a modern style home that could be seen as very contemporary today, the way it tries to blend into its environment. Not only does this continue to show his architectural styling, but also has Wright's handiwork involved in the hardware inside. He included flat face rosewood cabinets and added a simplistic design of brass pendant for his decorative hardware on the lower cabinets. And he continued his wood element throughout the home, 
even down to the split material brass and wood design doorknob. Another important architect that made contributions to their architectural hardware styles was Ludwig Mies van der Rohe, who is well known for creating the German Barcelona Pavilion. The pavilion was built for the 1929 International Exposition in Spain. It was Rohe's inspiration to create a modern contemporary design style that would suit the new industrial age. In the picture above the pavilion, you can see how very contemporary his design was for his time, from the unique open space design to the floor to ceiling, windows, and the placement of the huge wooden wall structures used as an accent wall or a room divider. Like other architects, he has also developed architectural hardware. You may notice those famous chairs in the picture. Ludwig Mies van der Rohe was inspired by classical forms, classical forms which influenced the very familiar, well-known Barcelona chairs, famously recognized by its classic scissor-shaped design. It was a chair style known as a curl seat that dates back to 1500 BC that actually inspired him. Examples of the curl seat have been found in Egyptian, Greek, and Roman designs throughout history, often with the strong connections to seats of power. This speaks to how architects and designers found inspiration from other eras and cultures to produce designs completely reconstructed uh, for their current times of living. Ludwig Mies uh, van der Rohe joins the many famous architects for creating architectural and decorative hardware with unique styling for the homes and structures they built. So understanding what that many architects like Macintosh, Van der Rohe and Frank Lloyd Wright had influenced not only the architectural structure styles, but influenced the architectural and decorative hardware styles. We'll now find the architecture style of the homes built from certain periods also heavily influence what we have today for the unique styles of decorative hardware in order to keep within the style and themes of that era. So let's go back as far as 450 years ago to see the architect of those styles starting with Gothic medieval style homes to colonial times in America to American Gothic. You may recognize this Eldon, Iowa wood farmhouse, which was included in a famous 1930s oil painting called American Gothic. The architecture was a style specifically utilizing wood instead of stone for building many churches and homes. Perhaps this painting may help you remember the American Gothic style farmhouse painted in 1930 by Grant Wood, who tried to capture the people of those times. Interesting to know, the actual models for this painting of father and daughter was actually Grant's sister and his dentist. And we'll also look at Victorian style architecture. And from Art Deco to mid-century modern to current contemporary styling today. Keep in mind, it was how people during those eras envisioned themselves living and what was technologically capable for building homes leading to the differing styles and decorative hardware or decorative art. So when it comes to architectural designs through the eras, we'll not only see the evolution and changes in the external structure styles, but the living or kitchen spaces as well. And importantly, the look and style of furniture and decorative hardware placed throughout the homes, further supporting why we have so many different styles. So let's now go through some of those home periods I've shown and others to look at how the architecture styles and theme spaces influence decorative hardware. Starting with Gothic style, originating in 12th century France, Gothic style, also known as French work, was widely used, especially for cathedrals and churches up until the 16th century. Gothic design is characterized by its detailed ornamentation, most noticeably built into the structures, archways, staircases, and elaborate rib bolting. As shown, St. Stephen's Cathedral is considered as the most eminent Gothic edifice in the whole of Vienna. Looking at the exterior, ceiling, and staircase, you get the sense of what this era of style was all about. 
This level of ornate detail in the Gothic era carried over to fashion, furniture, and, of course, the decorative hardware. But for the kitchens in the very large homes of this era, unlike the churches, they were very simple and plain with, inter with intentional open spaces to prepare up to large amounts of food. Stored food was mostly kept in specific locations like a shed for drying, and curing and salty meat and dried preserved foods were very common in this period. But what is interesting during this era is the kitchen was looked at as a place where aristocrats or the wealthy didn't want to visit or be seen. The wealthy, in many cases, would hire servants and purposely avoid the busyness of the kitchen and would build or keep the kitchen area separate from the living quarters, whether dis disattached or below at basement levels. As depicted in this 1620s painting called The Kitchen Scene by Peter Whitwall, the kitchen at times could be viewed as disorderly, sometimes a smelly place, and very busy with the coming and going of servants that help prepare the meals throughout the day. The service, uh, servants used pots or cauldrons and large fireplaces built into the structures. The owners also feared the risk of fires, another reason to have the kitchen disattached. However, these types of ornate decorative hardware shown in the knobs and cup pools to shelving supports and door entry hardware would be found throughout the home, but not in the kitchen. Only the living quarters, such as bedrooms and gathering rooms, were, uh, were fashioned with these types of ornamental designs. Uh, the artistic styling of patterns embedded into the hardware of this time had very diverse shapes and forms that repeated themselves or had overlapping patterns creating busy yet beautiful arrangements and configurations. This was a common theme for Gothic style found in homes and many churches of this era. American colonial. When it comes to colonial architecture, it's this style can be traced back to British architects, creating a style called Georgian architecture in England, from which many of the U.S. colonists Im immigrated. Interestingly enough, Italian Renaissance architects influenced the British architects, and British architect was based partly on Roman and Greek ruins. Those influences can be seen in the geometric proportion of colonial homes and the accents making up the style, such as Greek style columns built on the front of the homes at the doorway. This style of colonial architecture flourished in two main US regions, New England and in the Southern US. However, made mostly of wood and stone and also brick for the fireplaces, these styles became recognized as New England colonial and Southern colonial. Soon, architects and homeowners during this time sought to put their own stamp on the colonial style with unique accessories. These traditional colonial era accessories include such items as a brass door knocker, cut glass doorknobs, and gilt mirrors. And eventually, the use of shutter and hardware on the front windows evolved out of the colonial style. You may recognize some of those, uh, these decorative details as being traditional due to the period styling. Although not as ornate as Gothic or Victorian era, because craftsmen and artists of this time tried to separate themselves from the heavily ornate, overly done styling, but colonial era hardware was not lacking character either. Like the early Gothic style homes, early colonial kitchens had large fireplaces, serving two purposes for cooking and to help heat the home. The kitchen was a shared space for living, gathering, and eating, so furniture and architectural hardware would be found in the blended kitchen living space as well. The early pilgrims weren't the only people to settle in colonial America. Between 1600 and 1800, men and women poured in from many parts of the world, including Germany, France, Spain, and Latin America. Families brought their own cultures, traditions, and own architectural colonial styles. New homes in the New World were as diverse as the incoming population. The French adopted the home styles from, with steep roofs, elevated brick foundations, and wide porches as they built homes in Louisiana and Mississippi. These French colonial homes were an eclectic mix of combining European ideas 
with practices learned from Africa, the Caribbean, and the West Indies designed for hot and swampy regions in the Mississippi. Spanish colonial homes were often L-shaped with added courtyards and fountains. They evolved in America during the time the Spanish came to Florida and the U.S. Southwest. The Southwest style was also known as Spanish Revival. The Spanish rustic colonial homes differed from New England in Southern colonial style by their use of materials, which included adobe brick, clay tiled roofs, and thick stucco walls used to help keep the homes cool besides just being primarily wood and stone. And although this federal style was a reflection of architectural changes taking place in Great Britain, these federal structures were often confused with colonial homes. With the colonists rejoicing their American independence, the federal style homes started to become even more popular. So in this period of increasing wealth, people wanted bigger and more comfortable homes. Notable federal features versus colonial included mostly brick and stone facades uh, structures being used versus wood and stone. Uh, also common was split shingles and steeply pitched roofs and front porches, usually supported by pilasters or columns decorated as Greek columns, um, similar to the kind seen in Greek and Roman architecture. As mentioned, you may easily recognize a federal home in these pictures um, made of either stone or brick, but what is distinctly noticeable is the front facade with its evenly spaced symmetry in the windows and often elaborate front doorways. Notice in this picture to the right how this home's front entryway was updated with a new front door and porch, yet still keeping within the federal theme in using Greek style columns. Like some of the colonial decorative architectural hardware, federal theme design was not as overly ornate with over the top elaborate detail and carvings as Victorian design. Rather, it was purposely classically refined in its style. Common federal themes were bas relief on the ceilings and chandeliers, crown molding, oval and round convex wall mirrors, brass hardware with elongated back plates, um, bell pools with a bat wing back plate design, which kind of looks like the American Eagle spreading its wings. Um, door knockers, cabinet knobs with beading or coin formed into the surface as details, and sconces. The Victorian uh, era. During the Victorian era, the architectural style theme emphasized verticality with multi story towering homes and carefully placed multiple vertical column lines. Also, a lot of flower and leaf patterns were very popular at this time, even embedded into the fashion of clothing and seen throughout the arts of this period. Within many of the decorations, there was also a mix of materials and colors becoming very popular. The Victorian theme appeared to prioritize form and beauty over function. The Victorian era, like the Gothic era, era did not allow, have elaborate decorative hardware in the kitchen either. However, you may notice a difference in the kitchen compared to the early 1700s from the earlier colonial times. This kitchen space seems more organized and advanced. Towards the end of the 1700s to late 1800s, it was known as the Industrial Revolution period. And due to the advancements in technology, people were no longer solely required to use an oversized fireplace built into the wall. They could now cook on a four to five plate enclosed stove. This new kitchen appliance even had adjustable temperature controls for the individual stove tops. This provided greater management for cooking and made the kitchen a more enjoyable place. Because there was greater owner appreciation for the kitchen, this brought more design attention and detailing into the space. And unlike the kitchen era, architectural furniture pieces like chases, standing wardrobes, curio cabinets, nightstands, desks, entryway doors, pocket doors, and bifold doors had to fashionably match the home they were designed for or the wealth of the Victorian homeowners and often came with custom architectural hardware. These high class furniture pieces were often so heavily adorned with ornamental details, the hardware itself seemed to blend into the overall design. 
During these times, brass and bronze was the primary metals used to create hinges, doorknobs, stylish T knobs, detailed push plates, bell pulls, and pendants. Today, you can still find brass hardware priced at a more premium cost because people like the way the living material patinas over time. Or you can find brass pieces that have been plated over in another trendy finish, still having its heavy weighted valued feel. Many metal, uh, metal decorative hardware pieces you purchase today is more likely uh, made out of zinc and aluminum for uh, efficiently manufacturing designs and also made out of stainless steel. Would you place any of these de uh, detailed hardware pieces in your home today? The arts and craft movement was a very influential design movement in history. It originated in Britain during the late 1800s, 19th century during industrialization. William Morris, who was born in East London, helped steer this arts and craft movement. He was an artist, author, craftsman, and social activist. Uh, during this movement, people were concerned about the effects of industrialization on design, on the worker, and traditional craft. In the beginning, mass manufactured product was often of poor quality, made with low standards, and the conditions for the workers were not gratifying and not the safest. The movement stressed the importance of the craftsman's approach to product development and design, which better showcased the detail and inherent, inherent beauty of the material, the value of simplicity, and the enjoyment of creating beauty in design. In response to this movement, architects, designers, craftsmen, and artists helped create new ways of working on designs, and more people began to appreciate this method of thinking regarding their works. This movement affected the works of wallpaper design, stained glass, textiles, printed fabrics, tapestry, furniture, wood carvings, metalwork, ceramics, jewelry, and mosaic art. William Morris, who was very talented, was known, well known for his textile patterns. Shown here are a couple out of his 50 iconic wood blocking printed textile patterns developed onto wallpaper during the 1800s. Uh, the strawberry thief wallpaper and the trellis wallpaper. Textiles like these from this movement could be found on furniture, upholstery, curtains, ceramics, and even fashion accessories. Also during this movement, ornamental objects, jewelry, enameling, metalworks, and ceramics were all influenced greatly by the arts and crafts movement. Metalworks became the key craft of the movement. There was what was called arts and crafts hardware as seen in these images, um, bell pools, strap work, drawer and cabinet pools, hooks and hinges made of mostly iron, black iron, copper and brass. Uh, you may identify arts and craft era hardware by the emphasized hand hammering and hand applied patinas as distinctive details or the brushing. These hammered pieces would be combined with other metals to create a two-tone texture with both smooth and hammered appearances. This style was very unique and considered a style of its own, although the arts and craft movement didn't truly push any unique design style. The movement rather heavily advocated the arts and crafts as a philosophy critiquing industrial labor. The craftsman's home or bungalow, which, uh, which was a very popular style using some of the inherent philosophy from the arts and crafts movement. Um, it didn't take or become popular in America until about 1905 through 1930. Uh, the craftsman style exterior, which is one of my favorite styles, includes a covered front porch, tapered columns that support the roof and typically appear more sturdy at the bottom, becoming smaller at the top. Uh, they often have exposed rafter tails, which are the beams that stick out of the house and can be seen under the eaves. Uh, you can see in these images how the features of the craftsman style are still being used and is very popular today. The craftsman style was seen as a handcrafted building style, reaction to the heavily production industrial based lifestyle. The craftsman style bungalow also helped influence the later prairie style, similar to the home designed by Frank Lloyd Wright. This nouveau type of architecture, Art Nouveau, 
emerged during two major events, the Industrial Revolution in the 19th century and World War I. As you can see, the flowery or organic architectural structures and handcrafted designs appear to be more harmonious looking with nature. These design styles were about breaking away from the traditional structure norms and forms of society and industrialized product design. Similar to the arts and craft movement, but much more noticeable in style and theme. This period was also known as the beginning of modern design. This famous Art Nouveau inspired architectural building is called the Casa Batlo. It's a building in the center of Barcelona. It was designed by Antony Gaudi and is considered one of his masterpieces. There are no straight lines and there is a theme to the building around St. George slaying a dragon. This uh, style uh, of Art Nouveau hit the scene first appearing in European countries such as France, Belgium, and Germany. It's lavish with its decorative and flowery looking natural forms that seems to have intertwining curves purposely revealing a beautiful reflection of nature. Nouveau stresses handcrafted design and is known as a style of modernism in visual arts. This Art Nouveau style is most famously recognized in the structure of the legendary Petit Palace located in Paris, France. Its famously unique handcrafted ironwork staircase is beautifully captivating, and its painted ceilings and intricate sculptured facade designs truly showcases the Art Nouveau styling within this era of architecture. In product design, you can see the Nouveau styling in the French watch pendant in the top left corner there, or the beautiful bass relief sculptures shown in gold and white, the flowery wall tile, and the beautiful art drawing by Alphonse Mucha. Also, the standing uh, walnut corner console clearly shows Nouveau sculpting, almost looking alive as it was about to trot off with its hoof-like post. And you may recognize a pink-colored Elizabeth Tiffany lamp in the bottom left corner that was also Nouveau inspired. Just above the Tiffany lamp, we have a decorative hardware pole with petal-like layering and a whimsical style door handle. Nouveau style also appeared, appeared in small knobs too, in this open space flowery cutout knob and the two-piece crafted flowery knob made of brass and translucent plastic. These are all resemblances of styling of Art Nouveau. In these pictures, you can find this gourmet kitchen today in the home of the Chateau Nouveau, a private 11,273 square foot home in Tulsa, Oklahoma, built in 2007. You may notice the Nouveau styling carved and embedded into the cabinetry woodwork. Also the styling of the metalwork and artwork in the above pendant lighting. And just to be certain you didn't miss the artistic appreciation of Art Nouveau, the kitchen showcases a beautiful themed wall tiled image placed above the range. So now that you've seen Art Nouveau influence styling, it's probably not hard to ever spot Nouveau styling again. <laughs> During the 1930s, Art Deco. Art Deco further developed and was finally recognized as a major style in Western Europe and the United States. Uh, eventually, the Art Deco styling made its way into architecture for building designs. A famous Art Deco structure is the Chrysler Building skyscraper located in New York, built in 1930, which reaches 899 floors. You can see the stylish details similar to the popular scallop patterns you've probably seen in Deco style textiles. This building was recently bought for $151 million and is being considered to be turned into a hotel, actually. Another iconic Art Deco building is a carbide and carbon building, also known as Hard Rock Hotel in Chicago, which has 37 floors built by Daniel and Hubert Burnham. It is fashioned with green terracotta and polished black granite and trimmed with black marble and bronze detailing. Art Deco, an extension of French Art Nouveau, originated in the 1900s and was also called Style Modern. Deco derived from painting styles of Cubism to Italian Futurism. It was a movement mostly led by decorative artists who worked as designers in textiles, furniture design, and other manufacturer products. 
applying a new Art Deco style of ornamentation uh, to the scene. As you can see, Art Deco is more streamlined and sleeker, not as flowery and organic, although, although their take on the scalloped layering as shown on the Chrysler uh, building is intriguing and timeless as seen in the bottom black and gold textile. Art Deco embodies the impression of movement and speed and luxury. Movie theaters also took on the Art Deco theme styling, like the famous Paramount Theater in Oakland, California. You can see all aspects of Art Deco from the tile patterns on the exterior to the entrance into the theater and seating area inside. All of the Art Deco patterns, stylish ornamentation, and artistry you've seen eventually made its way to home design, appliances, and products like decorative hardware. You can see the similarities in this Art Deco home, kitchen, and bathroom with its curved lines. You may be able to see the Art Deco theme, movement, um, theme of movement and speed and luxury in these products from this time period as well. The Art Deco style club chair from the 1930s, um, the 1934 Henderson KJ Streamliner motorcycle, an angled V-shaped pool, a colorful 1950s oven, which is a Wedgwood four burner oven from the 1950s, offered in various custom unique colors like green, a cup pool appearing like the grill of the motorcycle, uh, Electrolux vacuum cleaner from the 1937, a red plastic pool with white stripes running down the middle, um, a decorative door knocker with artistic details tooled into the design, a Charleston 1930s door handle with paneled flared details, and uh, the enameled refrigerator, also with a stepped out paneled flared details made of metal covered with porcelain enamel. So clearly Art Deco theme styling, styling was popular and still inspires designers today. Mid-century modern. Um, Mid-century uh, modern is getting closer to our time. Uh, Mid-century broadly places architecture, furniture, and graphic design from the middle of the 20th century, roughly 1933 to 1965, which started on the West Coast in America, which emerged in the 20th century, uh, was a German art school called the Bauhaus School of Design, creating many industrial designers like myself, <laughs> whose principles were in direct opposition of the earlier design principles of the Victorian and Nouveau type era. Walter Gropius uh, founded the important Bauhaus School of Art and Design along with, uh, along with Ludwig Mies van der Rohe and Le Corbusier. Le Corbusier is regarded as one of the pioneers of modern architecture. You can see his mid-century modern design styling in his architecture. Form follows function is what industrial designers were taught rather than the ornamental decorativeness of the design being perceived as more important than the function of the product itself. The Bauhaus teachings of industrial design spread across to other countries, influencing many architects and artists. The Bauhaus teachings also embraced modern technology and became an international style method during the mid-century era. Mid-century architects and designers really focused on the functional design of the home, including the kitchen, um, regarding shared family space to be creative and relaxing in the home. So storage, counter preparation space, eating space, and family living space, as well as creative space was an essential part of the architect's original plans for the home. In this era, we finally had a full line of stylish appliances for the kitchen. You can see in these images, the kitchen was now becoming a more stimulating, uh, stimulating place to be, to gather as a family and prepare food with all the new appliances, such as a colorful ranges, dishwashers, refrigerators, freezers, flooring options, countertop styles, and decorative style cabinetry. And to note, it was the beginning of the microwave age. Some key, key things to identify a mid-century kitchen of that era was the bold color choices, from pink pastel stoves to blue refrigerators. And don't forget the cabinet colors that match the appliances uh, finishes as well for a complete single color kitchen. 
So when we think about mid-century modern design style in this era, a symbol of this era is the Eames lounge chairs, which was widely considered the most uh, significant designs of the 20th century. The chair in Ottoman combined molded plywood technology with an aluminum structure uh, with leather. And also another symbol of this era was the introduction of the molded red-orange fiberglass chairs built on aluminum and metal-based structures. You can see, uh, still see these designs today. These timeless mid-century chairs were made through the advancement in technology in the 40s and utilized by two industrial designers who happened to be married. Uh, their names were Charles and Ray Eames, who created these famous pieces for the well-known Herman Miller Furniture Company. To note, mid-century modern graphic art of this time, similar to Art Deco art and Nouveau art, heavily influenced architecture and hardware designs of this era. When looking at the hardware to the right, you may see the resemblance of shapes um, seen from some ever so popular graphic art of this time. In the graphic art below, notice the starburst theme, also depicted in the, black, uh, in, in the back plate of the knob, or the orange and black half moon boomerang form that can be seen carried over to the V-shaped or curved looking pool. You will find mid-century graphic art is still popular today if you're looking to add a taste of retro feel for your home. So when we talk about today's 21st century home design, we often call it contemporary architecture or transitional, which is a combination of traditional and contemporary. Uh, a tip to, re to remember is when researching modern style versus contemporary style, most people in the field of design would report that modern design refers to an era that has passed, while contemporary design is all about the now and the future. The kitchens of contemporary homes are generally sleek and minimalist, functional and often artistic in nature. So you can easily spot contemporary hardware because it is much of the same as the themed accents very sleek and minimalist, having um, long, clean lines or soft, elongated curves, but often geometric in design uh, with little to no overly ornate added details. Uh, many popular contemporary hardware today, although, like I said, very sleek in design, also use split metal finishes and split materials, such as glass and stone, or organic or geometric textures versus the arts and craft hammered style designs. So learning more about the different themes and styles the eras in architecture brought to us and how architect, architects influence design and architectural and decorative hardware, you will hopefully realize the inspiration of its existence and the decorative hardware you ultimately choose. And you can speak a bit more confidently on the differing era styles and themes surrounding the design of the hardware. So to understand what hardware styles are popular and trendy, you can tell by what architecture homes and kitchen styles are most popular today. According to mortgage reports, top six architectural home styles sold today are Tudor, Craftsman, Mid-Century Modern, Mediterranean, Farmhouse Ranch, and Contemporary. Shown are decorative hardware um, that matches mortgage reports top six home styles. Uh, you can see, as an example, the differing theme styles and different designs and how the decorative hardware styles change from architectural home styles to another. Ranch having basic early colonial design with the timeless cup pool styles, barn door hardware and latches, moving to Tudor style hardware with even more rustic look with twisted metal but yet more ornate from the American Gothic era, to the Craftsman hardware which also has a rustic look, but with more hammered pieces from the arts and craft movement, down to the Mediterranean style, which is a bit more ornamental in detail, hinting to the Victorian and Spanish revival influence, and then moving to the mid-century modern, which is the Art Deco, very geometric, but with soft curve styles. To finally, uh, to finally the contempor uh, contemporary having a cleaner look, often mixing materials and finishes while remaining sleek and geometric and streamlined in its shapes. 
It was truly a breath of styles from one end of the time spectrum to another. So in closing, uh, we have seen how architecture has changed through the eras and how grandiose decorative architectural hardware can become in order to match to the style of a home. And we can see how simple decorative hardware designs can be, yet still considered very beautiful and highly valued for their space they were designed for. And as we move from today's contemporary uh, into another era of architectural design and technological age, we will begin to see how our our decorative hardware designs and features will begin to change once again to pair perfectly with the needs of the homes of the future and the trendy themes created by the next generation of families. But decorative hardware will always be there assisting in the function of the home while adding just the right amount of style to perfectly accentuate your theme space. And again, thank you for your time today. Let's see if there's any questions out there. Well, hi, Peter. It's Deb Mayberry again. So this has been great. Everyone's putting some comments in here about they love the visuals. And it's right. a great walk um, through the centuries. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> history lesson, right? <laughs> and uh, yes, there are questions. So let's get to it. Oh, and, boy. and someone said you did an excellent job making this very interesting. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah. So let's see. So if a person has an old home, and or old furniture, is there a way to tell if the hardware is older versus a new looking hardware that's meant to look old? Uh, that's a good good uh, question. Um, like I said in my earlier slide, you know, it's hard to tell from vintage to um, replicated uh, products. A lot of manufacturers today are still making that very old traditional design uh, of that vintage look. Um, sometimes you can look um, if the product is embedded with a logo, maybe it's a, a recognized logo of a current manufacturer of today. Um, part numbers on the back kind of give away if the product is authentic uh, from an earlier era or if it's, you know, patinaing over time, uh, maybe kind of uh, prelude to what type of material it, it is. Again, uh, brass was heavily used and iron was heavily used in those era of time. So that might give uh, be some good giveaways of if, if it's really authentic or not. That's great to know. And, and I, I know exactly what you're talking about with patina. Um, so, so that said, that one of the questions that the same person asked was, so what is the best way to, to care for the hardware? And I'm assuming that would mean old versus new. Oh, yeah. Well, just like today uh, at Amrock, we actually um, provide care instructions for our products. So mild soap and water, um, just you know, gently clean uh, your hardware. I know in the kitchen you're gonna get you know spaghetti sauce and all types of food on your on your handles and pools, um, and children touching and grabbing things. But yeah, just mild soap, um, dishwasher soap, um, a nice fabric uh, cloth, a microfiber cloth perhaps, to uh, clean it. That's about it. Okay, and so. Um Someone was asking if you could go back to the beginning where you were showing that timeline. I know we recorded this. Sure. But they're interested can, in seeing that again. See if I can get. I think it was way in the front, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Okay. Dear. All right. That's pretty good. Um, but there, I know there was one before that you showed with all the like little blue dots and the time, the actual timeline. That is it showing? Is it not showing right now? There it is. There it is. Okay. There it is. We got it. Thank you so much. Um, so, so also someone I know this person happens to be an educator, and she said, so far no questions, just mesmerized by all of the fascinating info. She, <laughs> she she can't wait to share this with her architecture and interior design students. And one of the things that she's planning to do with them uh, is to um, have them design their own kitchen cabinetry hardware out of clay this year. And wow! She's thanking you for the inspiration. Yeah, that's awesome. And if she doesn't mind uh, sharing those designs to uh, me, I don't, maybe I might use them in production. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's interesting. Uh, I'll have to connect the two of you. <laughs> yeah. So let's see here. So someone else is also wondering about the recommendations um, for an industrial loft kitchen, which would be mid-century. But are there other options for industrial uh, loft? The hardware was a question. Uh, I, I think wondering about recommendations for an industrial loft kitchen. 
um, as, as far as placing uh, hardware in an industrial loft kitchen? I would say, yeah, mid-century, I think. Or, but they're wondering if there are other options besides mid-century. Um, I'm trying to think. I'm, I guess I'm not fully understanding the question. If, if you talk about hardware, are you talking about designing the kitchen? Um, I think the hardware. It, this person is saying yes. <laughs> in this, in this <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, uh, most definitely. Um, industrial. Um, a lot of industrial look hardware today um, has um, a lot of partition lines in it, kind of alluding to it being an assembled look. And so it kind of has that rustic or industrialized look. Um, a lot of plumbing features you're seeing today in faucets um, kind of has that industrial plumbing look. Um, you're going to find that in hardware um, as well. Um, um, and also, you know, the, the knurling, uh, we have a, a collection called um, Esquire uh, that has heavy knurling on it. And so you're going to get that industrial knurling feel as well. So a lot of plumbing um, connection pieces kind of designed into the profile and the texture of that knurling look as well. It's kind of that uh, lofty city industrial style. Okay, let's see. Um, what type of information about the metal or the finish should we ask to ensure that the finish will last and not wear off rapidly? Mm. Yeah, again, it goes back to your care and maintenance of your products. Um, try not to use any harsh chemicals on your products because you will um, deteriorate the... Um, most hardware has like a, a very thin, clear coat to protect the finish from um, rusting or or patining uh, over time. Uh, so you want to use very mild soap um, and stay away from harsh chemicals. That will have your product lasting a long time. Okay. And what are the most popular finishes uh, right now? Um, this person's saying I'm seeing a lot of matte black and champagne, but are there other colors that are trending? So we're talking about finishes and colors. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of the darker metal tones are really hitting the scene. Uh, like um, black stainless steel you're seeing and a lot of um, appliances and refrigerators. Um, you're seeing that, um, like a Lux steel in, in faucets and plumbing, uh, black stainless steel. Uh, we've actually launched quite a few new finishes um, on amrock.com. You can check them out, some really dark metal finishes. Um, also, um, let's see, we have a silver champagne. Um, not quite um, golden champagne, but kind of a silver champagne look. Um, polished chrome um, is very popular again. I think the farmhouse has actually brought that chrome look back in as well. Um, just from visiting, uh, going to KBiz and seeing all the different trendy finishes, um, there's a new a bronze look hue that's coming out. It's starting to trend a little bit. And um, we mentioned matte black. Or a B or a bronze seems to be fading away a little bit, but still there for those that like that kind of rustic look. Um, yeah, so I think darker metal finishes are kind of the new trend right now. And actually, white, white finishes, I'm starting to see. Um, I know um, there's some refrigerators out there um, that have, uh, I believe it is, I'm trying to think of the name, I think it was GE uh, Cafe Line. They have uh, a lot of mix and match. Uh, they come out with a nice satin white, soft white refrigerators, but you can mix, mix and match the door handles on that. So white, uh, the finish of white is actually coming back a soft white. Wow. So that's kind of across the board then, isn't it? Yeah, yeah it is. <laughs> yeah, you, have your, your, you, have, you do have your core finishes, you know, your, uh, your satin nickels and your oil bronze and your chrome. But yeah, more uh, matte black and, and darker gray finishes are very popular right now. That's great. So there was a question that I missed. So here's one. Uh, are we saying that the U.S. hasn't had, going through your timeline here and talking about the different trends over, the to over time, are we saying that the U.S. hasn't had any design trends since mid-century modern? It, it appears to this person that the contemporary designs shown are definitely European. Any thoughts on that? Well, um, yeah, I mean, uh, European influence is heavily on our American culture. Uh, a lot of the designs we're seeing today in fashion actually come from Europe, you know, fashion style, cars, uh, clothing, uh, jewelry. Uh, so heavily influenced in, um, from the European era, area. 
Um, but yeah, I, I think, um, you know, that contemporary style is definitely a, a higher price design that you, you might see um, out west in California, or you might see some in, in, in New England area, in New York era, area. Um, yeah, so I, I think that between mid-century and calling present contemporary, I, like I said in the uh, report, the most popular trending homes today you know, are still your your um, your um, your Tudor style homes, your Mediterranean style homes, um, your um, your uh, other kind of craftsman style homes, and your ranch style homes are still very popular today. Um, I'm not taking away from that um, the popularity of those, of those design styles, but just to show how the architectural hardware has been influenced throughout the time. Okay, and then the, we, you may remember we had a gentleman in the um, audience not too long ago when we were talking about appliances, so he's returned. <laughs> and he's saying, Matt is his first name. He's saying lots of appliance brands um, with finishing options now. Um, so so that's good to know, right? Oh, yes, yes. Again, um, like I said, um, Samsung, uh, GE, um, they all have a whole bunch of different uh, finishes you can have on your Refrigerator, uh, refrigerator doors and handles. So the appliances uh, manufacturing industry, they're just um, exploding with finishes. It seems like every manufacturer wants to have their own unique finish. Um, and same as hard decorative hardware, you know, um, a lot of folks in the um, decorative hardware industry kind of coined their own uh, finish. And like Delta has their champagne bronze, you know, that a very popular uh, finish today. Okay, that's good to know. So um, I don't see any other questions here. A lot of people are saying thank you very much. They love the architectural history refresh from their design school days at FIDM, which I'm not familiar with that school. Okay, Maybe great. you are. <laughs> but um, and everyone says thank you. It was a great presentation, and you have a lot. You have a lot of really interesting things to share. And uh, it looks like it was very informative. And the lady that was the um, educator, she's like. She would like to share the uh, clay designs, possibly. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh, great, great. Reach out to me. So I know Debbie, you're going to be sending out an email after the CEU webinar, and um, folks can reach out to our customer care team uh, if they have more questions about Amarok or if you want to get in contact with me. I really would appreciate it. Okay, that's great. And by the way, FIDM is Fashion Institute of Design and Merchandising in Los Angeles. Thank you for that. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, I want to thank you so very much, Peter and, and Amarok, for sponsoring everything this month. It's been great. This is a fantastic presentation. I was enjoying, and as many people commented, the, the wonderful pictures of everything that you had to share. It was really well done. I want thank to thank you. you again. Thank you. Thank and you, everyone. It's been fun working with you, too, Peter. Yes, it's been great. It's been awesome. Okay. Thank okay. you. Thanks. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful day, everyone.